Thank you for visiting Pastor Wyatt TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWyatt.com. I thought I knew it all, so I started reading Past the Wire. You should read it too. Everyone begins in horse racing with exactly the same thing. A dream. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. That dream is what unites us. But what truly sets us apart is choosing to make that dream a thrilling reality. At Dare to Dream Stable, we've been on a relentless mission to breathe life into those dreams for our partners for over 20 years. Here's the wire moon cat. Our track record cat speaks for itself. Legacy. We've excelled at turning it's dreams a into a reality. And to win. At the most reasonable price points in the industry. And the winner's circle is Dare to Dream Stable LLC. So the question is, do you dare to dream? Join us in racehorse ownership today. Okay, what's going on, everybody? Are you ready? Are you set for a super duper, ridiculously filled Saturday card, Breeders' Cup Saturday, nine, count them, nine championship races. I'm pumped and I'm ready. Let me ask you something. Do you know anybody that has spent somewhere in the area of 20 hours watching race replay film, breaks in the bigger races, 9, 10, 12 furlongs. I study the turns. That's how deep I get into things, ridiculously into my pedigree analysis. You know it all, so I won't even say it anymore. Let's get right to it. Saturday's Breeders' Cup uh, at Santa Anita, 11.30 Pacific Time starts the Breeders' Cup in race three. That's 2.30 Eastern. Uh, and by the way, if you're watching this and you haven't seen my video that was published by Pastor Wire TV uh, just early this morning on my Juvenile Friday, it's out there. I suggest you get your pen and paper handy and watch that through and through. So without further ado, Let's talk about race by race. Breeders' Cup Saturday begins with the big ass, and it's right there on the form, big ass Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Many of these Saturday races have big sponsors in the race title. So it's the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, going a mile, $1 million. Let me give you my order of finish. Then I will elaborate. Remember, I'm going about six deep in all the races for you fine people so you can make an informed decision at the window. And listen, it's a fabulous card. And you know what? It's got to be decisive, like I said, because when you're right, you get paid. And listen, we all take the good with the bad. One thing about racing, you can do so many things right, near perfection, and still tear up a ticket. Case in point, you got a mile race, you can have your top two, top three. They can hit the wire together, necks apart, noses apart, and you don't win. Then there's traffic issues. That, you, know, you know all the, the things that make you lose more often than you win. But when you win, it's just sweet, right? All right. And you know what? I know I put myself in a better position to be successful. That's why I share... What I feel is a gift. This, I mean, I'm going back Breeders' Cup all 40 years. I've done my homework for you and for me. All right, here we go. Santa Anita, race three. My order of finish, three, five, seven, four, eight, six. Three, five, seven, four, eight, six. Let's talk about it now. The number three is Cody's Wish. Now, by the way, I should have mentioned, you know, because I didn't want to be sort of melancholy. Uh, but I was really distraught with the, the news of Practical Move. I actually like the horse in this race. To tragically fall, cardiac issue, whatever it was, after a gallop, it's just sad. That horse had won four consecutive races. It's been a terrible year for horse racing. 
Uh, that's the third time in grade one, uh, you know, what happened early this year in Whitney Day and, you know, uh, it's really sad. That New York bred who won six straight races was escalating, uh, was dynamic as you'll find. Anyway, I, I, I couldn't go through with this race without paying my condolences to all the connections of Practical Move. Horrible tragedy. Anyway, here we go. So Cody's wish, uh, I couldn't get past a horse. Uh, as consistent and as reliable as you'll find in the game, 15 for 15 in the money. Uh, you know about all the horses' success at the distance, 7 for 7 at the distance. Alvarado up for Belmont. You know about the kid and his story, the reason why they named the horse Cody's Wish. You know, it's probably going to be favorite, and I'm the furthest thing from a favorite player. But I face reality. After I do all my work, and with a lot of these seasoned veterans throughout the card, I've watched many of the races numerous times. So I know the very specific, intricate ways of what each horse does or does not do well. Uh, and this horse basically checked all the boxes. I couldn't get past him. So he's my top choice. They have him to beat. Could he get beat? Yeah, if it's close at the wire. But when you when you have perfection at the distance, you have to respect that, especially when it's classy and the numbers are backing it. You know, sensational buyer figures. Um, so Cody's Wish is my top choice. I'm going to use three in my multiples, but he's my top choice on the win end and my exactors in triples. Uh, my second choice is the five. Charge it. Now, Charge It has been a little helter-skelter, if you will. Dynamic, as you'll find sometimes, and other times just, just didn't fire. But I believe he's right for this distance. He's right for the mile. I think they knew that. That's why he's not in the Breeders' Cup Classic or in a race of greater distance. Uh, Blink is off this time. He's cutting back in the distance. He's raced with so many quality horses. White Barrio, for example. Zandon, who were in the Classic. He's raced with them. Uh, you know, a seasoned horse. Uh, when he first got into the thick of things in the Triple Crown, uh, I liked what he did at the Florida Derby. I knew he had a lot of talent. And of course, everybody knows what the horse did in the Dwyer, the great three, uh, the, the great uh, three Dwyer at Belmont, winning by 23 lengths, posting that 111 buyer number. I think he fires. I think the cutback and the blink is off helps charge it. Charge it's my second choice. Upset possibility. My third choice is the seven. Uh, Algiers, that's the horse. Uh, who came from Europe, ran a big race over at Woodbine. I can appreciate the connections. Uh, horse has a nose for the wire. I like seeing that. Likes the distance. Uh, overall, five for six on the dirt. I just had him as a contender based on the company that he shared. So uh, the seven is my third choice. My fourth choice is the four. Where's the four? Hold on. Did I skip my page here? I'm sorry about that. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I, mix, I mixed up my pages. Uh, Zozos. Now, Zozos is a game, game competitor. Brad Cox, trust the bond. He's not a grade one winner yet, but Florenguru back up. Three for three at the distance. Eight out of 11. Uh, in the money, lifetime, lots to like about him, should sit a good trip. I just think the speed's going to get run down. Uh, Cody's wish and charge it. Uh, that's the way I see it. The two at the bottom of it that I'm, I'm giving consideration for my gimmicks are the eight and the six. The eight is, I got to keep my pages in order. 
is Shirley's big, only two races, you know, ambitiously ended by Dallas Stewart, Luis Sayas, three-year-old facing all the horses. I like the works. This horse could surprise a lot of people. Consider her dangerous for a pretty significant stretch run. It's youth facing older, but I gave her a, a shot at a price here. That's the eight. And the six is a horse I've made money with many times. Skippy Longstocking, Safi Joseph, and uh, Tyler Gaffleone connections. I just don't feel Skippy Longstocking belongs in a mile race. The horse gets going with more distance. Um, has had some big races. You know, this son of Exaggerator. I'm going to use Skippy Longstocking in my deeper gimmicks, but I don't know if the horse is good enough to win at a mile. Uh, the others just seem so much more appealing. All right, listen, I'll be back after this word. Lots to, co lots to cover. Get yourself a cold drink, and I'll see you in a few. You getting pumped? I hope you are. San Anita, race four, 12 10 Pacific, three, about 310 on the East Coast. Race four is the Maker's Mark Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf Sprint. Always a very, very intriguing race. 10 furlongs, a mile and a quarter. Now, by the way, just, and I know you guys know this, the season plays, but when you're working with a mile and a quarter, 10 furlongs, you really have to take into account the jocks that ride really well inside, outside, in between horses, horses that don't mind getting eyeballed if there's horses to the left and right of them. Lots to absorb as you prepare for the race. Anyway... My full order of finish for you to write down, and then we go from there. All right? Uh, race 4, San Anita, the mile and a quarter, uh, Breeders' Cup, Philly and Mare Turf, call it a semi-marathon, mile and a quarter, 10 furlongs. My order of finish, 6, 2, 8, 9, 1, 7, 10. I went really deep here because this is a, a fabulous race. What a race. 6, 2, 8, 9, 1, 7, 10. So my top choice is 6. I think many probably will side the same way. Sheer brilliance uh, overseas. Must respect the Europeans like I always do. They win every single year at the Breeders' Cup. Frankie DeTore's up. Horse is stretching out. Name of the horse, of course, is uh, in spiral. Uh, horse is stretching out, but wonderfully bred. Big shot in this race for Frankie. Think the horse is going to get up. Loves the lawn. Uh, I mean, 10 for 10? 10 for 10. Uh, I got so much to talk about this horse, but I don't want to Kills too much time. Horse is just under 2600000 in earnings. Uh, you know, when you, t excuse me, 10 for 12 in the exactors on the turf. Just made, in my opinion, to take the extra distance. 
It's going to be close, but this is my top choice, the six in spiral. My second choice is the two. Warm heart. Classy European. Ryan Moore up for Aiden O'Brien. Uh, comes comes uh, to the States with back-to-back -back wins. Loves the distance. Made for the turf. Bred wonderfully to win this type of race at a mile. Could very well win. I'm going to use in my multiples. Uh, those are the two horses I see hitting the wire together. My third choice is the eight. Fev Rover. Now, Fev Rover made some, I got some good money, a nice score from him over at Colonial Downs this year uh, in the middle of August. Won a big race, uh, the Beverly, grade one. Uh, you know, has had a wonderful 2023. The horse is going to be tactical. The horse is going to have probably a very safe trip. I'm going to use in my multiples, but on this day, I just think that the, the other two are a bit classier. Uh, so, Fevrov is my third choice in this field. My fourth choice is the nine. Didia, and I got to get used to pronouncing uh, a lot of these names that I'm not accustomed to. But this horse, 10 for 11 on the lawn, inexactors, loves the distance. I trust the bond. Uh, this horse also has a nose for the wire. When you have a horse that has a nose for the wire, this type of mare, they are who they are. They keep running. Um... I trust uh, Vince Chiminade. You're going to get a square price in this horse. Could better my rating. Uh, I'm going to use this horse in some of my exactors or triples. Definitely in my super factors is my fourth choice. And you know what? Because of the value in the price, I just may have to use them in my multiples as well. That's my fourth choice, the number nine. My fifth choice, the one... In Italian, another horse that made me some money in the past and broke my heart in the past. Last year at Keeneland in the Breeders' Cup, led every step of the way. I had a very generous wager on the horse. Had fractions, ran big, but got caught by Tuesday. And, you know, in my heart, I felt the horse was going to hang on. Uh, classy, many triple-digit buyers. Uh, fast mare, uh, Rosario for Chad Brown. I just think the horse could be a little over her head to go 10 furlongs. Uh, a mile and a quarter is a long way to carry speed. There's some classy individuals, classy mares in this race. Uh, you know, I couldn't leave them completely out, but uh, in Italian on Saturday is my fifth choice. My sixth choice is the seven. Lindy, uh, another accomplished European that came to the States, won at the very difficult track, which I call very quirky, Kentucky Downs. Uh, came back, ran a good race uh, at Keeneland, uh, going nine furlongs. I kind of like the way the horse is training. Gaffleone up for Brendan Walsh. This horse could potentially be overlooked at a big number. Keep that in mind. Especially if you're going deep in your triples and supers. Lindy is probably a must use because the horse is going to be flying in the stretch. Could easily get overlooked and go off at like 15 to 1. Finally, the 10. The last horse I'll consider in the race. A McCulloch. You got Irad up for Chad Brown. Great for distance, uh, needs to run faster, in great form. Obviously, I trust Irad significantly in the silks. Chad Brown always has his horses ready. But again, as much as I think this filly has a lot of promise, I just couldn't side with her over my others that I just previously mentioned. That's the Santa Anita fourth. Let's go right to the fifth.
before my next break. St. Eddie the Fifth, seven furlongs, the Breeders' Cup, excuse me, the PNC Breeders' Cup, Philly and Mass Sprint going seven panels. A very unique distance, always seven panels. Um, I'm going to give you my order of finish first, and then we'll break down the race. Seven, four, one, three, two, nine. Write it down. Seven, four, one, three, two, nine. By the way, this race will go off somewhere in the area of 3.50 Eastern Time. Let's go to my seven. Society. Tons of class, love and trust and value Stephen Asmussen and his barn. Uh, daughter of Gunrunner, Gathleon up. Uh, the horse has never been better, ever. Uh, high speed. The intangibles, the guts, the grit, the turn of foot, the acceleration and stretch runs. Three for four winning at the distance. Uh, her last two, her best ever. 105, 106 uh, buyers respectively. They got her to beat. Society number seven is my top choice. My second choice is the four, Matt Terea. This is another Philly that I've made... Some nice scores with, consistent, reliable, game, and a fighter. I like fighters, whether they're Colts or Phillies or Mares, Geldings. When you're a fighter, you're a fighter. Matt Terea is a fighter. So she's going to be my choice to get to the exacta. I'm going to use her in my multiples, but I'm on that 7-4 exacta pretty heavy. Then, of course, my third choice, good night, Olive. Listen, the horse is a sensational, not just a good, a sensational mare. The problem I have here is she drew the rail. Now, I ride, I could speak to, about him forever and ever. Probably one of the best, if not the best, and I trust him. But against these, at a short price, I just couldn't lean on the horse winning. Uh, could she win? Absolutely. She's 10 for 10 in the money. Uh, 8 for 8 in the money at the distance. Class of the race. Chad Brown and I ride. But do I want Goodnight Olive at even money? Or do I want the value with a sensational society and... Matt Terea, who fights to the end. I like the 7 4 1 triple. Uh, I think that's an inevitable finish. Uh, if Goodnight Olive wins, she's going to win over the 4 to 1. That's how I see it. So I'm on 7 4 1. Let me finish my handicap. My fourth choice is the 3. Ida. Bob Baffert. Speedy, fast filling. I gave her high S, high speed. Um, JJ Hernandez, very capable for Bob Baffert. Uh, lots to like about the horse, but against this measure of company, my fourth choice. Blink is on, is going to help. I just think the speed here is classier. Um, that's the three. My fifth choice is the two. Clearly unhinged. Raspoli up for Mike, Mar Mike McCarthy. Um, there's my other footnote on this horse. Okay, listen. It's a three-year-old facing all the Phillies, all the mares, uh, training well, has really done nothing wrong. Simply dropped to my fifth choice because of the company that she's facing, and she's got to beat all the Phillies and mares. Uh, finally, the nine is my final choice in the race, going deep. Your Gary, uh, Speedy for Rudy, uh, Rudy Brezette, um, Ricardo Santana Jr. Don't know if she wants seven. Respects to Speed. This is a daughter of Shackelford. Um, but like I said, when there's too much, there's too much. And that would be an upset to me. Uh, from the nine hole. So 
My order of finish is 741-329. I need some water. I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back with you guys. To and through the 2023 Breeders' Cup World Championships. Exclusive interviews, barn tours, winning insights, and more. Join Pass the Wire all week long on the backside and at the rail from Santa Anita. Pass the Wire at the Breeders' Cup World Championships is presented by Am Wager and Dare to Dream Stable. guys ready for Santa Anita the Breeders Cup FanDuel Breeders Cup mile got to talk about the sponsors two million dollars this is of course the turf mile uh, a, another fabulous field you know I know it's overstated in some degree but every one of these fields is really put together uh, there's a lot of quality horses that are going to be at double-digit odds. And that's the beauty about this. You do your handicap, you stick to your science. And to me, my goal is to find the overlay. I want value, but I respect when there's a short price when I can't get past them. Um, so underlays, overlays, big part of this game especially if you want it to be profitable. Um, you got to have a vision. You need to picture the entire race in your mind as you're doing the handicapping. And that's what I do. Anyway, one mile on the turf. This race is going to go off somewhere in the area of 430 Easton. My order of finish. Write it down. 2, 14, 6, 10. 3, 8, 12. You want to repeat it? 2, 14, 6, 6, 10, 3, 8, 12. Let's talk about it. The 2, one of my big prices of the day. All right? Tyler Gaffleon is up for Chad Brown. This horse looked absolutely fabulous. Talking about a filly that was ready to run in her big win going a mile at Keeneland. Grade one mile, uh, just, I watched that race four or five times. It was such a significant surge, but what I liked about it, it just seemed effortless. I knew she was winning halfway through the race, and I think she goes forward from that. Um, so there's a lot of hard hitters in this race, a lot of horses that just excel on the lawn, but I think this horse repeats uh, off that last. And I'm going with Gina Romanica, my number two, to win this turf mile. My second choice, let's go all the way to the 14. Master of the Seas. William Buick for Charlie Appleby. Big time races since coming from, uh, from overseas. At Woodbine in Keeneland, again, I studied both of them numerous times. You know, the horse is going to need a big-time trip. I trusted the rider. Uh, the connections have done it before, and they've done it often. So when you got a game performer like this, it's hard to eliminate the horse from being in the mix down the lane. So the 14 is my second choice, Master of the Seas. My third choice is the six, another terrific, terrific looking filly, three-year-old facing all the horses, four straight wins, count them, one, two, three, four. <clears throat> Comes from overseas to Keeneland, when you win at Keeneland at first asking with a 99 buyer, 
You're in great form. The horse is a three-year-old filly facing older. I think she's definitely a, a contender in the race. Wouldn't shock me if she won, but she's my third choice because my top two are just that much more appealing. Okay? My fourth choice is the 10. I'm glad I stapled things together so I don't, I'm not out of pages, you know? The 10 is Songline. Now, Songline, just a wonderfully looking, beautiful mare. This is Japan's best shot. And yes, I'm using this horse in my multiples. So that I'm telling you I'm going three deep in the race, maybe four deep. So if I go four deep, I got to use the 10. Nothing wrong with this horse. I didn't do as much work with the Japanese bread here, but the horse loves the lawn. You can't dismiss the consecutive wins, the form that she's coming to the country on. Uh, it's Japan's best shot, and they have many entries. The horse is probably going to be 5-2 to two or 3-1, to one, maybe 7-2. to two. Contender, must use in big multiples. Going to be in my triples and my super factors. The 10 is my fourth choice. The 3 is my fifth choice. Casa Creed. Another much respect. This is a 7-year-old. Luis Sayaz up for Bill Mott. If you watch... The horse's last two races, uh, defeating Annapolis uh, at Saratoga, going a mile each time, it shows you that the horse has it inside. The horse has heart. True game, true grit. Another fighter, like I talked about, Matt Terea. Uh How much are you going to ask of the horse? I can't put the horse on top here. Because the others are just filled with class, but I can't throw her out completely. So the three, for you guys that are attached to Casa Creed, you got to use her. Uh, she'll be part of my deeper gimmicks. Probably not on my multiple ticket, but much respect. The three. My next choice, my sixth choice, because I went seven deep in this race, is the eight. Du jour. Du jour. Bob Baffert, much respect again, loves the distance, seven for nine, and exact is going on the weeds, going the distance, uh, no travel, West Coast. Um, I don't think this horse is one that should be totally dismissed. Her last, two, excuse me, to Gelding, his last two were good. Probably his best. Does he have one more in the tank? I don't know. Uh, gave the mention of consideration when I broke down the entire field. It was a deep field. But that's the eight, which is my sixth choice. Finally, some respect for the 12. Exalted. Peter Erton. J.J. Hernandez. I like a horse who wins at the distance. Who's four for four at San Anita? How do you dismiss that? They're all good. But this is a, a tall task. The, the, the type of company this horse faced uh, throughout the year, not the same as many of the others, but how to give some respectful consideration. Again, the deeper gimmicks. But my full order, 214, 610, 3812. My focus is going to be on the 2-4. So, excuse me, 2, 14, 6, and 10. All right? Let's move on to race 7. Race 7. We'll go off somewhere in the area of 5, 10, Easton. Uh, it's a great field, great distaff. Uh, of course, the distaff is 9 furlongs, a mile and an eighth. Uh, $2 million. Uh... Very competitive field. I know these horses like I know the back of my hand, but I will elaborate some. My order of finish is 649-1131. 649-1131. My top choice to six. Search results. Now this is a race 
because it's crazy competitive, I think Irad for Chad Brown run run big here. Uh, I trust the horse at the distance. When she's good, she's very good. Uh, you know, I couldn't get past. I like the value. And I considered my top four as being major contenders for the race. But I, at the end, I sided with search results. Uh, the four is my next choice. Idiomatic. Two for two at the distance. Nice looking daughter of Curlin. Muscle bound. Noted that. Muscles like a colt. So idiomatic. Tons of speed. Brad Cox got this gal ready. Florent Giroux. Muscles up like a colt. Uh, I know there's lots of speed in the race. But this could very well be the horse to beat. Uh, you have to use the four in your multiples. And I would use her in my exactas and triples. And I wouldn't be shocked if the four won the race. Because the horse the horse to beat. But I'm going with search results to pull off the upset. Because I just think the horse is training really well. Let's go to my third choice, which is the nine. Clarier, talking about a hard-hitting veteran. Now this mare is five years old. Uh, daughter of Curlin for the Asmussen Bond. You got Joao Rosario in the silks. Last two, do we call it an excuse me? Uh, on her best day, she's as good as everybody. She could win this race. But she hasn't been as good lately. You know, she's a hard-hitting mare. Uh, I don't know if the nine furlongs is best for her. I think eight and a half. You say, what does that matter, Gio? But 110 yards is 110 yards. And you know what? The horse has her best races at a mile and a 16th, eight and a half furlongs. So I love the horse. I've been a big fan for a long time. But she's my fourth choice. My fifth choice is the three. Pretty mischievous. Gaff Leone up for Brandon Walsh. Distance, she proved herself at the distance. It's a three-year-old facing all the horses. Five wins, two seconds in the last seven. Fabulous form, proving great one winner. Also a fighter. I just don't know. I'm not sure entirely uh, that she'll be in the thick of it late in this race. Uh, but how do you dismiss a horse that's seven for seven and exact is in her last seven? Uh, but today or Saturday, she is my fifth choice. Uh, did I say five? No, she's e, nine is, where am I? Six, four. Now, Claire was my third. Yeah, the 11 is my fourth choice. I'm sorry if I'm, I'm mixing my pages up. Uh, no, no. I'm 6491131. My apologies again. I'm like all wound up here. Uh, the three was my fifth choice. That's right. Finally, my sixth choice is the one. Somewhat intriguing with this great filly. Who's your filly? Uh, Sayaz is up. Major change. Huge change, in my opinion. Is going to need a trip. She's going to run better than she ever did, but they are putting a mask on. you got blinkers. She's gone nine furlongs before. Horse has been greatly disappointing because as a juvenile, she was dynamic. And she's tailed off uh, in her three-year-old campaign. But she made my grade. She's my sixth choice. The official order, the SETI order, 649-1131. I need to take a break, get my papers in order. Tracking trips with Pick 6 King, John Stetton. It's one of the best tools in horse racing for any level of player. It's your second set of eyes. Spotting troubled trips, betting angles, track trends. 
Horses to watch and favorites to fade. Ten figs, ticket structure, and more. At Tracking Trips, you're a friend with benefits. Not a member? You must hate winning money. Join Tracking Trips now. Visit PassTheWire.com and we'll see you in the winner circle. Remember, nobody does it better. Frankie Vittori. Ciao, Frankie. Tutta posto. Tutta posto, yes, that's a good start. So you haven't, you, you haven't lost your Italian. Frankie Dettori, legend, world-class jockey, one of the best ever to sit in the saddle, ambassador to the sport of kings. Meet Frankie during his fanfare like never before, only on Pass the Wire TV. Okay, guys, we move on to, in my opinion, the two biggest races. They're all big, but the $4 million Breeders' Cup turf, 12 furlongs, a mile and a half. Mr. Seti loves my marathon races on the turf. Uh, I've had a lot of success in this race over the years as well. So much to digest. The Europeans do a fabulous job all the time in this race. All you have to do is just research the history. But let me go, let's go forward uh, to sacrifice some time. Set the order. Race eight. The mile and a half, 12 furlong marathon, Breeders' Cup turf, $4 million. My order is, write it down, five. 14, 4, 8, 10, 11. Double check that. 5, 14, 4, 5, 8, 10, 11. All right. Why did I mention the 5 twice? Let me get that out. 5, 14, 4, 8, 10, 11. All right. Let me go to my winner. This was really a tough handicap. It's a European. Ryan Moore up for Aiden O'Brien. Auguste Rodin. Or Auguste Rodin. Very impressed with the company that she kept, held, and raced with in Europe. I think there's a purpose for this horse. Love a horse that's proven at the distance, has the pedigree for it, uh, two for three winning at 12 furlongs. It's a challenge here, but this serious connections. And, you know, my top three, I juggle, I juggle. But I sided with this horse because I think the horse is going to be backed at the window. And if she takes the trip, something I don't know. You know, one thing with the Europeans making the U.S. debut, you trust the transportation, the connections, and their reputation in doing so. But you don't know the horse. The horse got to get familiar with the surroundings. How, how did the horse take the travel? Um, so the five is my top choice. Way over to the 14, a horse I know, like the back of my hand. This is as game as you'll find a mare. At 12 furlongs, has won at the distance seven times. This is Warlike Goddess, number 14. Junior Alvarado for Bill Mott. Uh, I did watch a few more races, but I know the, the habits and the willingness and the talent of this, of this man. Uh, just miss putting her on top. She can easily win. She'll be part of my multiples. Nice price, too, because there's a lot of hard-hitting European invaders in this race. Uh, of course, daughter of English Channel. Uh, no doubt, most accomplished at 12 furlongs. Has been in brilliant form. The last at Aqueduct, yielding turf. Just watch the race. Um, she, she, she was brilliant. 
She ran like the wind blows. Warlike Goddess is my second choice at a price. My third choice is the four. Boschel Ballet. Now, Boschel Ballet, also from Aiden O'Brien. I had a nice score on this horse at Saratoga, August 26th. Look at the way the horse ran there. 107 buyer. Blew away the field in a stretch. And I was on it that day. Uh, you look for opportunity. This is a horse that's much traveled. European, back to the States, back to Europe, back to the States. I like that. I think she'll be game. I think she's in good form. She hit my. She hits the board in my book. And you may get a price on her too. You know, you're talking about talented, talented marathon turfers who are going to be 8, 10, 12, 15 to 1. So, uh, Boschel Ballet, the four, is my, is my third choice. My fifth choice, excuse me, my fourth choice is the eight. Up to the mark, I ride for Todd Pletcher. I had a score on this horse, which was on the undercard Derby Day. I actually had a big, big daily double alive going into my Kentucky Derby with the song. And I was greatly disappointed because it was paying a giant number uh, for the amount of times I had it. But up to the mark, classy, comes into the race, three race winning streak. The only question mark is the 12 furlongs. I think the horse is going to be game. I don't know entirely if she's made for the 12 furlongs. You know, that last 220 yards, that last eighth, sometimes is very grueling. But much respect to the horse and everything the horse has accomplished since. Uh, my bottom two in the race... It's actually called a bottom three because I like the nine a little. Oh, with the 10 and the 11. Uh, the 10 is a Damo. Now, this is going to be a monster price. But again, I'm familiar with the horse. The horse, on her best day, was a monster. And she had big time traffic problems in some other races. But, you know, she's tailed off a bit. It's from Chad Brown, you know. His best would be dangerous in this race. So the considerations there and definitely be part of my super factors. Going a mile and a half, uh, not proven at the distance, but at one time this horse was real good. So uh, I think Chad's got the horse ended for a purpose. That's the 10, Adamo. And let's go to the 11, which is King of Steel. Frankie Dettori up for good connections, proven at the distance. Very impressed with the body of work overseas, making a U.S. debut. Again, a three-year-old facing older. And that's always a question mark. All right? We're going to see what happens. So that's the $2 million, excuse me, the $4 million marathon turf. Very competitive race. Order of finish, 514, 4, 8, 10, 11. A little bit on a 9 there, too. Uh... Who I, I promised I'd give a little consideration to. She made my grave, uh, made my grade, uh, Masadavov. Um, but only for your deeper uh, gimmicks. Man, I got to keep up with the time. I'm going to go one more race, then take a break, and we're going to we're going to go into the final two. Now, one of the things they did this year, which after 40 years bothered me, because I'm a racing purist. The Breeders' Cup Classic, which is the next race, which is race nine, six million dollars, forever was the last race on the card, the way it should be. It's the classic. But because of contractual obligations, sports, NBC, the whole hocus pocus, for the first time ever, the Breeders' Cup is not the last race. It's race nine with two races to follow. Which bothers me, but we have to accept reality as it is, not how it was or how we want it to be. So, without further ado, the Breeders' Cup Classic sucks that we lost a few horses. Archangelo is going to be a big um, contender here, out of the race. Forte, retired, 
not available. Uh, Mage, who I did not like in the race anyway, but I, I was hoping she, he was in, so the Kentucky Derby winner would gather some action at the windows, but Mage is not there. But it is a brilliant field, full field, very competitive. I'm going to give you my order of finish, and I think there's big balloons because I don't like the horses that are probably going to get the most money at the window. My order of finish, 2, 13, 8, 10, 3, 6. A repeat for you because it's the classic. 2, 13, 8, 10, 3, 6. Who's the 2? Zandon. Zandon is Frankie DeTore getting the mount for Chad Brown. Now, again, at the back of my hand I know this horse. I have every one of his races typecasted in my brain. But I still watched a few again. But I will tell you one thing. The horse is as consistent as, as reliable as you'll find. Has always ran in a race with a tiger who ran a career best. 11 for 11 in the money uh, tells you a lot when you speak of the, uh, being on a dirt track. Never off the board. Um... Turns the tables, in my opinion, on White Barrio. We're going to get into White Barrio in a minute or two. But Zandon, at a price, and the price could be 8, 9, 10 to 1. I like Zandon to emerge victorious uh, because, yes, yeah, second and third best many times. But in those races, the horse ran into a horse that ran at their career best. I trust Chad Brown, and I like the Frankie DeTore's on the mount now. My second choice, let's go all the way down to the 13th, Proxy. Now, people that know me, they know that I'm partial to the horse. I scored on Proxy a few times. But every race is a new chapter. Every race is different for me. And it just, it doesn't, it's not a, a prerequisite that I'm going to go with the horse again. I happen to like his chances here. Rosario up for Michael Stedham. This is big for the barn, the Stedham barn. Uh, the horse has had a great year in 2023. I think the pace will be live enough, and with that lively pace, I trust Rosario and this horse to really relish at the distance. The horse is going to be coming late. I go with Proxy as my second choice. My third choice is the eight. Oh, I went with the Japanese. Now, let me tell you why I did this. I respect the Japanese connections and the horses that they bring in. This particular horse, scary form, scary form. Six for six winning at this distance. Six for six. That's not easy at 10 furlongs. Uh, $10 million in earnings. How do you not respect a horse coming from Japan, granted, U.S. debut is a U.S. debut, and she's facing our best, but I, I can't look past that type of form. I'm sorry. What's my third choice? Japanese. If I pronounce it right, Ashpa Tesoro. Ashpa Tesoro. My third choice. My fourth choice is the 10. Dreamlike. You know, very intriguing with Dreamlike. Entered, ambitiously entered, in the Breeders' Cup Classic. 30 to 1 morning line. Could very well be 25, 30 to 1, maybe 35. And this horse has talent. Jose Ortiz up for Todd Pletcher. Her last, the Pennsylvania Derby, she ran big. He ran big. Sorty Crown ended up winning the race, but this horse is getting better. And you know what? If the pace is hot, like I feel it's going to be, this horse is going to be coming in the stretch. You know, it would be a major accomplishment, but you can't dismiss a 104 buyer. Granted, at Parks, but I like Dreamlike to threaten to make this a very, very accommodating and very financially absorbing, wonderfully profitable superfecta. That's the 10, Dreamlike. My final two... Or the three, White Barrio. Well, let me talk about White Barrio for a second. Let me make this very clear. Love 
Richard Dutro, Irad Ortiz. And you may say, what are you out of your mind, Gio? How do you have White Barrio as your fifth choice? I'd be clear to tell you, White Barrio, if that horse runs back to what he did at the Whitney, at Saratoga, horse wins. A 110 buyer blasted the field, uh, and he beat some classy individuals. When I look at the configuration of this race, horse may very well be right in the catbird seat to chase the speed. That's why I'm telling you, yeah, White Barrio can win. And by default, I have to use White Barrio on my multiples. I got to go deep here. Because even though it's not a stretch in terms of what my top four is, got to respect White Barrio better than ever. And if the horse runs back to that performance at the Whitney, it, she could take it all. The question here is the distance. And although working well, I don't know. I think Zandon turns the tables on him. On him. And if I like Zandon, I got a short White Barrio. That's what I'm saying. Zandon was second to White Barrio in the Whitney, turning the tables. Finally, consideration. The six, it's actually the six slash the 12. Saudi Crown and Arabian Knight of very, very, very talented horses with an abundance of speed. If they run to their capability, they're not going to waltz around the track. You're not going to see a, a 48 high or a 49 half. The half is going to be strong. It's going to be 45 and change, 46. That's going to really open it up for everybody else who I mentioned. Uh, you know, I was up close, two feet away from Arabian Night at the Haskell this year. And I wasn't overly impressed at the physicality of the horse. I was in the paddock. Just how close I was, taking pitches. And the horse fell that day. She did come back. He did come back and run huge at the Pacific Classic. Ran first triple-digit buyer. Trust Bob Baffert. But between Saudi Crown and Arabian Night, the way I see the race, they're not going to waltz around the track. They can only be on the lead, and I just think in the final quarter, that last 400-plus yards, especially in the final eighth, they're going to be greatly tested by some real classy closes. You know, Zandon, White Barrio, uh, Proxy. Um, hey, we don't got to worry about Archangelo. That's my Breeders' Cup Classic. Sucks that it's not the last race of the day. I'll be right back. Where's my switch for the final two races? And we'll call it a Super Saturday. Be right back for the last two, which are very important as well. But I need to take a break. some exciting news. The RF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Hello, friends. Cheeto DiPaggio here, Mob King. 
Anytime I'm wanting to know any information about the sport of kings, horse racing, I look to my man Jonathan Stetton at PassTheWire.com. And if you're looking to bet, like I always am, no better source than Jonathan. They don't call him the pick six king for nothing. So why don't you do what I do with anything that pertains to horse racing? PassTheWire.com. Tell him Cheetah the Pazio sent you. It is here, the big day, the day almost all of us in horse racing wait for, Breeders' Cup Saturday. It looks like we're gonna see some really, really impressive races on Saturday. It starts with the Philly and Mare Sprint. Uh, one of my stronger opinions on the card is, is Goodnight Olive to start things off. I think she gets a perfect trip. Goodnight Olive, six in a row and a Breeders' Cup champion. We've got modern games going in the turf mile for Godolphin. Uh, the Godolphin and Aiden O'Brien horses we said on Pass the Wire TV all week long on the backside. Those two contingents stuck out from all the rest. Modern Games looking for a, a, a big race in front of him. Modern Games storming down the center of the course. Modern Games, the two-time Breeders' Cup winner, you bet he is. That is Rebels Romance, who in my humble opinion is one of Godolphin's uh, better chances this year. Rebels Romance is a very, very good looking Godolphin horse that can absolutely win this race. Rebels Romance is a must use. Rebels Romance, rolling on the outside, where the goddess makes her big down toward the inside. Rebels Romance down the center of the course, has a post to home. Rebels Romance wins the turf over Stoney. We got Flightline that they're putting in the best ever category. There's no question that the race he ran in the Pacific Classic is one of the best races we've seen any racehorse run ever. It is Flightline, it is mind tingling, jaw dropping, awe inspiring, secretariat like. Okay, everybody, back at you for the final two Big Breeders' Cup championship races on Saturday. Santa Anita race 10. This is the turf sprint going five panels, five furlongs for $1 million. Of course, this race follows the Breeders' Cup Classic. My order of finish, get ready, 12, 5, 1, 6, 10, 9, 3. Let's go to the field. Crazy competitive. A lot of work for this, too. 12 horses, my top choice. And a good number. I think this horse is going to pay about $16. How about that for a deuce? Arzak. Michael Trembetta. Love that he has a mount over in the Breeders' Cup. Luis Saez. Uh, I think he wants this win, too. Proven at the distance, the last really got my attention. That was at Keeneland, the, the Woodford, grade two. If you watch the race, the acceleration, uh, the horse was dynamic. And I think, in my opinion, based on her last two, <clears throat> I think the horse is ready to win again. You know, this guy don't have the same body of work as many in the field. But I'm going to get 6 7 a one on a hot horse with a confident rider. Stepping up here, you know, this is a whole new ball game. It's not a grade two or grade three, but I'm taking a shot. Uh, you know, nice works. Top form, you know, career best. One more step forward puts this horse right in the mix. That's the five, uh, That's the 12, Arzak. Then go to the five, which is my second choice. Living the dream, European invader. Very impressed with the body of work. I'm good with the works. 
I trust the connections. Again, there's a purpose for them bringing this horse in. I think the horse is going to gather action at the windows. It was enough for me. Big threat and a stretch. Living the dream. The number five is my second choice. My third choice is the inside horse with Rosario up for Christophe Clement. Obviously, the horse is going to need a trip. Uh, not the swiftest starter, but loves, relishes in the distance. Eight out of nine in the distance. That's an exact as my folks. Eight out of nine, winning six. I trust Rosario. Uh, fits with everybody buyers-wise. We'll need a trip. So if there's room, this horse is going to be full of run in the stretch. Only five furlongs. Not the swiftest starter. Is going to need a perfect trip. But if the perfect trip is there at a big number, this horse could win, which I'm using in my multiples, or could easily be in your exact or in your triples. Okay? That's the one. My fourth choice is the six. Kia Jockey. Kia Jockey also will be a price. Uh, dangerous when I consider the full body of work, but I was very impressed with the grade two sprint at Kentucky Downs. You hear me talking about Kentucky Downs? It's not easy to win there. Uh, the horse came, had a perfect trip, got up. Another forward move puts this horse right in the mix. Should get a tactical race. Uh, Jose Lescano, very capable in the silks. For, for George Arnold. Kia Jockey, the six, is my fourth choice. My fifth choice is the ten. Motorious, Philip Tomato. Flavian Pratt riding for Philip Tomato. No travel whatsoever. West Coast horse. This is a gelding who exhibited to me Superb acceleration. Superb. The buyers triple digits the last three times the horse went out. For four for four and exactors at the distance. Made for it. Again, good trip. Right in the mix. The 10. So, you can actually make a strong argument for my 12, 5, 1, 6, 10, my top five. But I have to be precise and that's my top five. The, fe the final two in the race are the nine, which is Rosa for Deborah, Irad for Christophe Clement. Steps way up, in my opinion. Great form. Uh, appreciates the distance. Appreciates the lawn. I like a horse that's, uh, you know, has premium connections like this, working well. But it would be a, a big surprise if, if the horse was able to beat this entire field. But because Irad is who he is, I think there's a shot the horse will make the bottom gimmicks. So we'll be in my triple and my super effective plays. Finally, the three. Caravel, you know, a classy man, a 10-time winner at the distance. Oh, just under $2 million in earnings. Brad Cox has Gaffleon up. Gaffleon knows this horse well. Gutty Mare. I just think her better years are, are behind her. Uh, it's going to be a short price with a lot of work to do. You know, got my consideration as a mention, uh, as my sixth choice, but that's where it ends. So that's my race 10. Before we get to the finale, 12, 5, 1, 6, 10, 9, 3. Finally, race 11, the Breeders' Cup Sprint. Six furlongs. This is always a dogfight, right? And it's the last race of the day instead of the Breeders' Cup Classic. Um, did a deep dive. I like the horse to win is one of my better bets on the entire two-day card. Uh, so my order of finish, write it down, 289461. 
289-461, race 11, which will be going off about 8 p.m. on the East Coast. The two, Dr. Civil, J.J. Hernandez up for Mark Klatt, West Coast horse, no travel, love his works, um, trust J.J. Hernandez, love Santa Anita, four wins in six races over the Oval, uh, I think the horse sets a fabulous trip, nine for nine at the distance, hitting the board, no doubt the horse to beat, I respect you if you disagree with me, one of my best bets on the collective cards of Friday and Saturday, the Breeders' Cup, I will go no worse than second with this horse, but I am going to lean into the horse on the win end, that's the two, uh, Dr. Shivel. The eight is my second choice, who I thought was a contender on the win end. Elite power. How can I not? Remember, when I go through the rest of the field and I select this, some classy individuals. Elite power. Four for six at the distance. This horse won eight straight races. Then was beaten by Gnight, who I'm going to get into. Game is you'll find a horse. You get Irad up for Bill Mott. Uh, do I have to say much if the horse won eight straight? Classy. And those were grade twos and grade ones. Uh, but he's my second choice because I got to be decisive. And that 2 8 exacta, be sweet. You may get 40 bucks for it. Um, on a deuce. The nine is my third choice. Gnight, who I just spoke about. Gnight turned the tables uh, on elite power. Uh, another game individual at the distance. Six for six in the money. Brand new to Santa Anita. It's the trip to the West Coast. Making the debut at Santa Anita. I make her, make him my third choice. All right? Let's round it out with my fourth choice, which is the four. Hoist the gold. Hoist the gold is Johnny V up for Dallas Stewart. Intriguing. Very, very, very intrigued, interested with the horse's workout pattern. Excellent. All right? So I like the horse running well in the morning. The latest work. Five going a minute, one breezing. The last at Keeneland was real good. Best of his career. Uh, just, you know, made the horse a contender in my eyes. So that's my fourth choice. And I round up with the six being my fifth choice. Let me get to the six. There's a lot to cover here. The Chosen Vron. The Chosen Vron, one of those sentimental stories California bred, another horse, eight straight wins. Not one, not three, not five. The horse has won eight straight races. But open company, it's not a, it's not a cow bred race. Horse did win uh, uh, the Bing Crosby um, grade one at Del Mar, but I don't know. This is just too much to ask. I think class is class. Putting a horse on the board, working well. My fifth choice out of respect. And my sixth choice is Sayaz on Nakatomi, Wesley Ward. Not even hear much of Wesley Ward in this previous cup, huh? Uh, but Wesley Ward deserves consideration to be in your triples and supers. Likes the distance. Has comparable numbers, but it's a gelding that's just a cup below many of them. So there you have it. Let's, let's really, really enjoy and crush the Breeders' Cup this year. Watch my Friday Juvenile 5 Race Handicap on this same channel if you missed it. And please, any questions, any comments... I take the go with the bed. If you like somebody I gave no mention, let me know. I'll let you know what I thought. 
I'm not going to be perfect, but I'm confident that I'm going to be good. Because you know what? For many, many years, decades, I have put myself in a better position to be more successful at the window because of old-fashioned hard work. Hours of film study. I'm good with the numbers. I'm fabulous with pedigree. And you know what? When you've seen it all and done it all, you're seasoned. All right? So good luck to everybody. Let me know what you think. Uh, and this will be the last of it until we do the Pegasus in January. But let's crush this Breeders' Cup 40th anniversary. God bless you. Does it better?